I'm standing in a combined research and undergraduate lab at the Norwegian University of Science and Technology in Trondheim, Norway. I'm here this morning to show you some real, real examples of pipes that we see in a, in a real setting. There are many, many pipes in the, uh, in the laboratory, and let's take a look at a couple of them. If you look up here, you see this large red pipe here that is probably part of the floor drain system. You can see that we have large, long pipe runs. We also have clamps, which are joining sections of pipe. So this will be a straight section of pipe. This will be another straight section of pipe, and there'll be a small flange in there, a gasket, and then this clamp placed around it to hold those two pipe sections together. You also see that we have many fittings. So here is a T-like fitting with a 45 degree section coming off of it, a 45 degree elbow, and then going up probably to a floor drain on the floor above. As we look over, you see another piping system here that's interesting. Um, here we have heaters for this room, and the heating and much of the heating in Trondheim comes from a uh, garbage incinerator which produces hot water, and that hot water is circulated in a district heating system. You can see here, these insulated pipes here are carrying the hot water to these radiators, and you can see they're insulated to keep the heat in so that we're not losing it on the piping system, but rather being passed to the room through these radiator systems which are in every room in, in this building. So you can't see the fittings under there because of the insulation, but you can see a small bit of copper pipes sitting out of there, another fitting, and as it goes into that, uh, into that radiator. So also in this room you see the fire protection system. These are the sprinkler systems. So you see the large header, again, very long uh, iron pipes running the full length of this room, extremely long sections. Again, these clamps holding these flanged piping systems together pipe holders hanging down holding this system and then here again you see a branch going up to uh, a T and a smaller section pipe moving across uh, and these will go at regular intervals across the room so that you have the sprinklers which will be activated in the event of a detection of fire. Okay, another piping system we have in here is for the air you can see we have these very large um, corrugated type ducts for the uh, ventilation. Um, and we have openings in these with diffusers on the end of them. So the ventilation air or fresh air from outside is carried through these headers and is diffused or decelerated out and dispersed into the room uh, through fittings such as this. There's more than down the length of the pipe, and this main header will just come to an end, and whatever air is still in the pipe will be ejected there. Here's another piping system we can look at using the uh, domestic, uh, using the domestic water. There's some more interesting things here in the domestic water, which is uh, part of the safety systems in this laboratory. And you see here two different kinds of insulation serving two different purposes. So this is actually a domestic water line coming in. This will be the cold water coming in. This will be the warm water coming in, the warm domestic water being insulated in order to keep the heat in. And the cold water line is insulated with a different type of insulation. It doesn't have the uh, aluminum with a low emissivity for the heat transfer, but it does have this insulation which is um, preventing condensation on the pipe so that we don't get uh, the cool pipe resulting in condensation and then drips of water falling down uh, onto the equipment and, and electrical connections below and whatnot. And these two, these two things are coming to first. You see the cold coming down, the copper pipe of the main domestic water supply coming down to this nice chromed uh, fitting going towards the appliance at the end of it. And you see the hot water coming in here, which are going to be mixed down here in a mixing valve. And here we have the eye wash station. So there'd be an accident in this laboratory and somebody needs to flush out their eyes. Of course, we don't want to have burning hot water or freezing cold water, and so we get a mix of these two. You put your eyes to this, push on the handle, and clean out your eyes from any spills that have gotten in there. In the case of the shower, it's a little bit less sensitive, and so we have only the cold water. If you're in the need of an emergency shower, I'm sorry you're going to have to put up with uh, cold water, and uh, you'll be all the better for it. Okay, moving over uh, to the other end of this lab, we have now some specialty piping that you wouldn't find in a house. Um, but that is very important in the laboratory setting. 
And these are some interesting uh, pipes. Again, you can see the the length of some of these piping runs. Here's where they come into the room. They've come from ultimately probably a, a K cylinder or a bottle filled with each of five different gases we'll see in a moment. And here we have more of a, a drawn tubing. And so you can see the way this pipe is done. It's a stainless steel pipe. And we have this drawn tubing and it's simply been bent in order to follow the profile that we want. So here we have an elbow that perhaps doesn't have the standard radius of some of the others. And we might have to think about that when we're trying to calculate pressure losses and such a thing. But there's a 45 degree bend and another 45 degree bend uh, so that we can get these pipes um, going where we want them to go. Let's look at that further. It gets up, hugs the roof tightly so that it can get over this line here. We have the pipe holders holding them here. And then here we have this other tube um, bonded to this, brazed or welded onto this, and we have a drop coming down so that we can get to a point where we use this. If we follow this, this drop, or perhaps the next drop over here, it's bent around with a whole bunch of fittings getting around the ductwork and the ventilation air, following the wall down. And we see what we have. Here is a line that is containing nitrogen for our experiments, often used to purge things. Uh, carbon dioxide, carbon dioxide, uh, used in some of these experiments. Helium, argon, and oxygen. And finally, more bends, and you can see the different radius in each of these bends that were needed as this tubing was bent for this particular application, coming down to a pressure gauge and a valve before we can have a place where we can attach something to this and actually use this gas stream. Now we have piping systems on other scales. It's nice to be in a lab environment because we can see all kinds of neat things. So here are some undergraduate uh, experiments that were purchased. And if we look on here, we can see piping systems that are fittings on yet another scale. So not really so important what this is, but here we have some stainless tube fittings and we have these nice uh, pressure fittings that uh, as you screw this and increase the, uh, the tension with the threads you get a pressure fit between these. You see here an example of a nice uh, T on this branch. We have a valve on the drain here, another T over here, and then you can very clearly see the nice flange fittings here that aren't clamped as the other ones. These flange fittings have bolts going through them to hold these two sections together and of course there'll be a gasket in between there as well to make sure there aren't leaks. You also see a number of valves in the system. There are many different types of valves and they'll affect the flow differently. And these valves, you can tell when they're open or closed because the handle, will, if it's open, will be in line with this pipe. And you can sort of imagine that flow can go through there. Whereas if I swung that valve up 90 degrees and closed it, you would see that now there was a, a line this way showing that that valve was in a closed position. Look at all the different types of fittings and the length of pipes between those fittings. Here's a screwed fitting uh, over here, a close up of that valve uh, connecting that. Different piping branches going to various places uh, on this particular apparatus. See some piping in the back that is insulated again. And you see also where we have another type of pipe. We have a hose on here, which would be a different type of material coming off of this fitting. So we had a an elbow there going to a hose clamp, another type of material. We have inline valves that are going to affect the flow in these piping systems, gauges. Here's a nice example of a little flow meter. You can see as the flow goes through here, it turns this wheel and then it's calibrated such that the speed of the turning of that wheel will be able to read somewhere uh, the flow rate going through that pipe. And finally, as we go over to this water turbine type lab, we see all kinds of uh, additional fittings. You can see here a uh, centrifugal type pump. And here we have plastic PVC fittings. You can see here's a threaded connection from this uh, going into uh, this, this pump. Here we have glued fittings. So those ones would be glued on, a little bit harder to take off and on. And, uh, it, you have to almost break those pipes and put on new ones uh, in order to change the piping on a connection like that. But that's the way much of the draining system in your house will be. If you look under your under your sinks in the basement, you'll surely see such things. Again, we have a flanged fitting uh, to here. We have a screw fitting to this now uh, brass or copper, uh, probably gate valve, another type of valve that will affect the flow differently. You see the electrical motor here 
driving, driving this pump in order to circulate fluid through this system. More of these screwed connections and couplings and unions. A very short radius elbow, a small section of, of pipe to join these things, and then going into other fittings. In this case, this is producing a jet of fluid that is hitting off this Pelton wheel, which is going to spin this around and students can carry a laboratory on the, on the Pelton wheel. So I hope this has given you a nice example of many of the different pipes and appreciation for the long length of these pipe runs, the sheer number of fittings that can be in there, the different types of valves, the different types of fittings, the different way we can uh, use tubing or pipe and bend it versus putting on fittings, and think about how that might change the flow in each of those things, because in this unit we're going to be focused on calculating the pressure drop through these systems, these kind of systems, so that we can understand either what kind of pressure we have to have in a reservoir to have the performance that we want, or what size pump we have to have in such a system in order to deliver the flows that we need through the piping systems that we create.